In our last episode, we took you to the beautiful Jarama Falls. This place was stunning. From the mixed growth woodlands to the bird life and the many rock pools beneath waterfall after waterfall. Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, this week's video is going to be a little bit different than our typical sailing and cruising life videos. Uh, we are veering off to answer all the questions that I've been asked about uh, my current health situation. Yeah, so if you don't know, about seven months ago I was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. And um, yeah, it's been the lots of questions and lovely support from you gorgeous people that has prompted me to put this video out. We've had lots of questions from people asking what I'm doing, how we are, people have been asking uh, to learn about what they might be able to do to help themselves. So yeah. So this is going to be a pretty frank discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Good old frank. Yeah, be warned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it might challenge a lot of what we have learnt, because uh, what I was traditionally taught has basically been flipped upside down. Um, I chose to uh, take on the specialised field of detox and regeneration of the body. And actually it's quite interesting because um, I've just recently been uh, getting back into editing the footage that we uh, have been taking and the footage that I've been editing about the last sort of six or seven months ago, Darren and I were quite pale and pasty and unwell. It's been quite telling. And so, you know, I don't know if you guys have been watching the footage, but I'm guessing by now you might be thinking, we look really good. Because <laughs> yeah, this is actually a real-time video now, like all the other ones are from way back then. So yeah, yeah, we're talking to you in real time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'd have to say, we look really great, we feel really great, in fact, we're practically glowing. <laughs> so it's a bit of a sign, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, we're out cruising around again, so that's all, it's all pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what happened, and um, why did I choose um, detox over allopathic medicine? Yeah, so back then uh, I was pretty much panicking, and I was uh, trying to hold off the fear. We both were, weren't we? Yeah, it's pretty confronting when uh, somebody comes up with a silly word. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. yeah cancer's a big word. And um, I did a ton of research. I basically dropped everything in our lives and just turned into a research nutcase. It was nice staying unturned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to find out what cancer is and what the cause is and um, what my chances were of a full recovery because that's always been my goal. That's the ultimate goal. It is. No. So uh, I elected to have a lumpectomy, which was to have the lump removed from my breast. Um, no need to keep it there, right? And uh, yeah, um, I looked into actually having both of my breasts removed and my uterus removed and my ovaries, just having the whole lot taken out. I was just like, get it out. And the reason behind that um, was because I was told that uh, my particular type of breast cancer was estrogen dominant so it was living off the estrogen uh, in my body and being a woman we're quite estrogen focused right? right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I now understand that that would have been a bad decision um, I was advised by a really good surgeon not to go down that path because a double mastectomy is really full-on for a body and it can have quite serious complications and lifelong complications and the whole process can take up to two years of several operations for it to occur. So yeah, I was offered chemotherapy and radiation and told that I would have to be on uh, hormone blocking medications for at least 10 years. It's a long time. So yeah. That got me thinking, right? See, like many other women on this planet, I've been on a hormone pill for much of my life. When I was trying to get pregnant, I was doing IVF. 
And you know, man, that was just like some sort of crazy hormone mania party. Hmm. And you know, in the last three years, I don't know if you guys, if or you've all seen the video where I had my neck surgery. In that three year period, I was so heavily medicated. My body was just getting worse and worse and worse. And so I had a surgery to remove the growths that were growing in my spine. But it didn't seem to work, you know. I still had to take a stack of medication to get through my days. It was pretty crappy, wasn't it? Well, it was pretty, you know, it was terrible, you know. You, and some of the medications were super heavy duty, you know. Take a pill and go to bed. Yeah. That's about all you could do after that. Yeah, and that was after surgery. And you know, my body's been growing fibroids and tumours for years. And I keep having operations to have them cut out. And I'm still on medication. But they've kept growing. And now that one grew and it was cancerous. Yeah. So I have to say I was a bit dubious about the whole pill popping thing for life. And I wanted to know if they were really the answer. And still no one had answered to me what actually causes cancer. So I asked my specialists, my very excellent and informative oncologist, um, what's the cause of cancer? And what's the hope of me being cured by your treatment? Very interesting question, Maggie. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, cancer's a bit of an enigma, apparently. Um, and yeah, if you cut it down to the chase, basically the cause of cancer is cellular inflammation. Yeah, and so as I mentioned, I was advised that to mop up this mess that had been created in my body, chemotherapy was the way. And that's all cool, but you know, with my history, I still wasn't convinced. Yeah, I definitely wasn't sold on the idea. No, well, you know, the odds weren't really sort of stacked in your favour, really, when, when you talk to the oncologist. Uh... Yeah, yeah. That was a really interesting time, asking them all my questions. And I'm really glad I did a heap of research. Yeah. So I had questions to ask. Anyway, I got the information from the oncologist and I took the, um, I asked a chemist to tell me what was in the chemo drugs. And basically, it's battery acid. If you pour the stuff on your hand or your arm, it's gonna, you're gonna get some pretty severe burns. So with chemo, this acid is poured directly into your veins, having the view of killing off the inflammation killing off these nasty cells but the problem is it also has a really detrimental effect because it kills off your healthy cells in your body as well and I'm sure that you guys have seen how sick people are and how much they struggle to go through chemo so that was interesting I also uh, asked the oncologist what were the other side effects of chemo. So other side effects can be permanent immune dysfunction, permanent photosensitivity, uh, loss of feeling in your fingers and feet and your, and, your, and your limbs. It can be a loss of your sense of smell or taste infertility, blood clots, organ failure, heart failure, and even cancer. Yes, chemotherapy can cause cancer. Interestingly, interestingly one of the other side effects of the uh, hormone pill is cancer. And then I looked up the hormone blocking medication and one of that side effects it's cancer yeah none of it's really any good no 
So then I looked into studies uh, and I found one particular study that hung out in my mind and I won't get these stats quite right because it was, it was a long time ago. Um, it seems a long time ago. But uh, they took 1,700 women, were placed into a study and they had chemo and radiation or chemo radiation and hormone blocking therapy over 10 years. And out of that study, the results were that 800 women died, and 800 or ish, 800 women uh, had secondary cancers. And we don't know what happened to the remainder women uh, in the study. They, I don't know why they didn't complete the study or whatever. Oddly enough, that study was taken to be a success. But I, I, I guess didn't it was a success if you weren't in the study. <laughs> if, you weren't, if you weren't in the study. Yeah, I didn't see it as a success. I was also told that there were three, uh, three types of people who go through the whole chemotherapy program. One type, you can throw anything at them. You can give them anything and they'll survive no matter what. Another type will end up having secondary cancers and the other percentage of people will die. And there's no telling which group I was going to be in. Yeah. And I was told <laughs> that because I was relatively young and relatively fit and healthy that I would be given the full dose of chemotherapy and they would wouldn't stop until my heart started telling them they needed to stop. And finally I was given a chart which um, uh, which showed me uh, my allocation, so if I took the drugs in the proposed program, how much better I would be having undergone chemotherapy and radiation and being on the hormone blocking pills. And over a 10 year period, I would be 12% better than over if I had done nothing. So to go through all of that and only get a 12% increase in my life expectancy over 10 years. It wasn't particularly good either. No, it was quite depressing really. Mm. The whole thing was quite depressing, yeah. I have to say. I felt very dubious about it. And um, yeah, I really had a hard time finding belief in it. They weren't winning any hearts with us when we were, when we were in there. Yeah. It's a pretty tough, uh, tough job when you're dealing out them sort of results. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and, I, and I kept trying to be guided by, by how I felt. And it was interesting because every time, I went <laughs> every time I went to see my oncologist or the medical association or the medical type people, it was never any good news. <laughs> I always felt really blue and there was lots of fear and it was very heavy. And then whenever I looked at something else, other options, I felt light, I felt bright and I, I felt drawn to it. Okay, so in the meantime, I've been very lucky to be supporting a very dear friend of mine through her own personal health journey. And uh, she was very, very, very unwell. And she turned her health around. She's done a complete 360 following this particular uh, detox and regeneration road. So, um, yeah, and I'd also been uh, researching my own, doing my own research into um, the detox road and other alternative treatments. It was really interesting, actually, because to me, many of the treatments uh, actually seemed a bit like chemo. They seemed only to be treating the symptom. They weren't actually um, getting people to a point of cure. And you know, I really wanted to be cured. <laughs> My question was, how do I stop the cancer from returning if I'm just treating the symptoms? And the answer is, you won't. You have to get to the core cause of this cellular inflammation. So how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> Great question! Uh. <laughs>
The answer is actually really simple. <laughs> okay, so when your body gets into an acid state, your cells have become quite inflamed and you are, you are a term to be in a state of cellular inflammation or acidosis. And from what I remembered from basic chemistry, uh, you neutralize an acid with an alkali. So I went back to that chemist and said, is that correct? And he said, yes. So I couldn't figure out the benefits of pouring a whole bunch of acid into my acid body to try and bring it back to a state of balance. It just sort of didn't make sense in my head. Hence me being drawn down to this detox route because you can actually bring your body back to a state of alkali. Get everything cleaned out. So I asked, you know, how does this all occur? Mm. How do you do it? Yeah. Yeah, so our, our body's um, a bit like a car or an engine. If you, if you pour dirty fuel into it, it blocks filters. And um, your body is just one big filtering system, basically. And, um, you know, with the car, you've got filters and you just unscrew them and throw them away and you put a new one on. What do you do with the body? you got to clean it out. You've got to clean the filters out. You know, and if you don't change the oil in your car, eventually you'll need a mechanic. But if you treat it right, it'll give you many, many happy years of motoring, right? Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I guess you could um, relate our gut to the fuel system in our body. So we tip fuel in, into our mouths, goes down this big pipe and ends up coming out our butt, right? <laughs> and in the middle, somewhere along the way, all these amazing transfusions are supposed to occur. I guess you would understand that if you've ever had the pleasure of cleaning out the pipes of your marine toilet. <laughs> There's a pipe, it gets a whole lot of stuff in it, and you know, over time it gets clogged up, because stuff sticks, right? Kind of like um, arteries get clogged up. Similar kind of thing. And so it slows down the body's ability to uh, transfuse all the goodness from the fuel that you're tipping into it. And the other part that I learned about is our sewer system. It's our lymphatic system. And I've been taught that that system is the cleaning system in the body. It helps filter and it helps get rid of the metabolic waste. So when your guts when your gut is overburdened and your systems start to decline, the lymphatic, lymphatic system has a really hard time getting the waste out of your body. So what does it do? It stores it somewhere to try and get rid of it later. And in my case, it's stored and stored and stored and then popped a tumour. And that seems to be what happens with us as we get older and things are starting to block up. We start to put on weight and so on and so on. And that's what's happening. It's, we're already starting to store all the rubbish. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, it doesn't get cleaned out. I had a colonic years and years ago. And that's the only thing I've ever done to clean my body out. What have you done? Do you, do you clean your body out regularly? Yeah, well. You just keep shoving food in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we were doing. <laughs> so yeah, we learned that what causes our bodies to get blocked up very much has to do with the nutrients that you feed it. Right? The only way that we have the energy to run our bodies on a day-to-day -day basis is by what we put in our mouths. Most of us have a diet that's fairly high in protein, which is actually acidic, and gluggy food that can also be quite acidic causing in the body. You know, think about it. Meat, milk, dairy, eggs, grains, breads, sauces, um, stews, syrups, salt, yogurt, cheese, sugar, oils, Fried foods. Um, Alsace, great. Yeah, 
Foods, it's great, tastes great. <laughs> Foods loaded with sauces and dressings and cakes and sweets and uh, chips and burgers. Yeah, the list goes on, right? <laughs> it's all quite gluggy though, isn't it? When you, when you sort of picture it. Tastes great, but yeah, over time, you've got to see. You put something it, like it that. It builds up, mm. right? <laughs> And you put something like that on your plate, you try and wash it off. Oh yeah, it greasy. You know, it just sticks to your plate. What do you think it's doing to the inside of your stomach? Yeah. You know, and how's that food cooked? It's it's boiled and steamed and fried and deep fried and microwaved. <laughs> it's char grilled. <laughs> Which also tastes great. But what I've learnt is actually it takes out the nutrient value of food. When you start cooking something over a certain temperature, I think it's, oh my God, we're having a March fire invasion. Mm. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <When> down. <laughs> um, as food is cooked, the nutrient value of it is reduced. So the proof's in the pudding, right? You know, um, we do get glugged out, we do get weighted down, we do get bloated, we get so full. I mean, I know I've been pe through periods of it. And yeah, we're partially defined by genetics, we're partially defined by the environment we live in, the chemicals we have in our house, and we're definitely defined by our mindset. But most of all, I've learned we are very much defined by the type of fuel that we choose to run our bodies on. We don't ever give it really much thought. We just go into the supermarket, throw on the trolley. How many times have you actually picked up a packet to see what's actually in that packet? Mm. It's full of... Uh... Yeah, man. I started reading packets recently. It isn't even food. There's no nutrition in that stuff out of packets. It's a sugar and fat and a heap of other words you can't even read. It's, mm. um, it's, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. And so like part of most, a lot of our population, there's a lot of talk about it at the moment, of our population currently being overfed but malnourished. You know, and you can be, you can be overweight and you can be skinny, but you can still be malnourished because of what you're putting in your body. Yeah. It's true, we really have learnt this. I'm going to tell you about it in a sec. Yeah, so Darren and I were eating a pretty much average diet, weren't we, babe? Yeah. We were pretty much, we were low meat, but we were eating a lot of chicken. Um, we were trying to get our protein through our eggs, so we were eating a lot of eggs. An insane amount of eggs, actually. And we were eating a lot of dairy, and we were eating a moderate amount of grains and breads, and a moderate amount of fruit and vegetables. And that's what we thought was a really healthy diet. But it can't have been, because I got cancer. <laughs> and I never knew that we actually, our human bodies don't actually need that much protein. Protein is actually quite acidic to the body. We don't need the heavy loads that we are currently consuming. And we've proven it. And we certainly shouldn't be cooking the bejesus out of our food. So what should we eat? That's a good question. Okay, so a diet of whole foods, plant-based, mostly raw, fruits and vegetables. That's it. <laughs> it sounds pretty insane. It does sound a bit insane. Yeah. It makes a really goes makes for a really good detox diet, and that with um, I've learned with a small amount of grains and nuts and seeds is actually a really good diet for the human body. Body loves it. Yeah, the body loves it. I mean, look at us. Yes, you probably think we've gone a bit nuts. <laughs> My mum certainly did. But you know, she's come around. <laughs> and why? Why raw? Because it, it gives the body the most nutrients that it can. It really packs a punch. You know, fruits are the cleansers for the bodies. They cleanse and they hydrate. And vegetables are the builders of the body. They build the blood, build muscle. Yeah, 
So you can get everything out of fruit and veg, we've learnt. It's a really high energy food. It gives the body every nutrient it needs for its processes. And when combined with powerful herbal medicines and uh, fasting, intermittent fasting and longer fasts, it really packs a punch and you can really start to see a difference in cases like me. So far so good. Yeah. And that's because instead of constantly digesting, the body's actually having rest time. And when it's in rest time, it actually can heal the organs and the systems of the body that have been slowly depleted over time through age and diet and stress. So yeah, it's quite mind-blowing really. <laughs> Darren was just saying he's starting to smell and sound like a doctor, but I'm not. I'm just a lay person. And you know, we've just had our experience and this is what we're doing. We're sharing our experience. Yeah, and it all started to make sense, really. Um, and to have a friend who had healed herself during this, doing this protocol and then, you know, just haphazardly, it was really strange. Within that sort of three month period, we were meeting people who had had cancer, who were treated by the chemo path, um, people who had treated themselves in alternative paths. Um, there was, I was discovering lots of people speaking out like I am on YouTube and through social media. And it was really um, empowering and really um, so good to hear other people had tried other things and were having a successful time with it and were vibrant and alive. So yeah, it really helped me and Darren alike with our decision making for this journey. Well, you quite often wonder, uh, you know, will it work? There's only two decisions, you know, which the alternative, or do you go down the traditional road, or you just sit there and do nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's not there's not that many decisions. No. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I really, really, really wanted to find cure. I wanted to get to a point where I could kiss this situation goodbye and be in optimal health because of the lifestyle that we live and the dreams that we have together, you know. It's, uh, you've got to be in really good health to live this life and enjoy life, you know. So I thought, why not give it a go, you know. Um, we talked about it and yes, we could afford the herbs. They were, they are expensive. <laughs> but to me, if they got me to a point of recovery and cure and I, you know, going raw, it's a challenge. It's a mind-blowing uh, thing to get into. It totally flipped our world upside down. But we were really happy to give it a go for three months and see if it made any difference. And then if it hadn't made any difference, then I'd just go and do chemotherapy and suffer it, right? Yeah, well, as time went on, it, the, the, the light became brighter. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and the thing is, it's only a, a diet change. You know, fruit and veg aren't going to kill you. In fact, <laughs> in fact they've done quite the opposite to Darren and I. Yeah. <laughs> they've given us our life back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's the road I chose. Just to give it a go. And I took it on as a challenge. I thought, right, I'm going to make the best of this that I can. Yeah. And it's all been worth it. <laughs> Okay, so how's it all going, you're wondering? I've told you about my decisions and why, and now you want to know, how's it all going? Darren's actually, I think, a really good example of this because um, I've been taking these really powerful herbal tinctures to really help clean out my system and, and, um, and cure myself from this inflammation, this issue, the big cancer word. <laughs> So I've been on a really, really, really um, high boost medical treatment where Darren's just, bless his cotton socks, got right on the program and taken on the raw food diet. So I've been doing it both and Darren's just been doing the raw food. Now babe, you know, from just making the diet change, what's changed for you? How do you feel? Um, I feel great. Um, there's certainly, there's certainly been a, a lot of noticeable changes, like in the past six months. You know, I guess I'm a typical um, mid-50s guy. Blood pressure starting to creep up a little bit. You know, whacking on a few kilos. Um, you had lots of skin issues? 
Yeah, I, I had lots of skin issues. Um, you know, I was starting to get all them little sunspots all over me. And funny, my skin's all cleared up. Blood pressure's back to normal. Um, you know, I've lost a, I've lost a bit of weight. It certainly hasn't hurt me any. And um, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great. And you know, I had typical aches and pains and headaches and stuff. Well, I haven't had, I haven't had any of that since. Uh, since I've got on this uh, crazy diet, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Would you go back? Uh, look, I, I feel it'd be all right to, to teeter on the other side a bit. You know, I'm never going to be that anal about it. You know, I still want to, I still want to live and rock down to a restaurant or, you know, have a beer or whatever it is that you do. But, um, you know, generally across the board, I'd say we'll, we'll probably probably keep rolling with it because I, I think it's a good thing yeah yeah it's a great thing <laughs> you know I, I thought it probably uh, when I first thought of it I thought oh it sort of sounds like witch doctor stuff to me because I'm a pretty practical sort of fella <laughs> but, uh, anyway there is a lot in it there's a lot in it there's a lot of benefit to this witch doctory raw yeah. foodist stuff yeah. <laughs> Good on you, babe. I'm really glad you're feeling better. Yeah, yeah. It was a surprising side effect, actually, feeling better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, feeling better is always good. We create our own health, right? And I'd gotten myself to a point where I was exhausted pretty much 24 hours a day. I was popping pills just to make it through my day. If I went for a walk in the bush, uh, I'd have to have a sleep afterwards. You know, that's it's just no way of living. I was in so much pain. I was bloated. I'd gained quite a lot of weight in, in, in a year. I was really dehydrated. I was guzzling so much water, but it was just having no effect. In fact, I've learned it was having detrimental effect. Um, I had a permanent dry cough. I was always feeling cold and my legs would twitch at night. Um, yeah, I was really in a bad way. I didn't know it, but my cells were starving for uh, proper fluids, nutritional fluids, and for proper nutrition, proper food. My adrenals were down, my kidneys were down, my thyroid was down. Um, you know, there were a lot of signs to that, but I just didn't even know uh, what they were. And um, yeah, I never got uh, diagnosed for that before. But and now I'm working with this uh, really well qualified naturopath and um, yeah, they, they are the organs and the systems in my body that I'm talking about that were very, very depleted because of the diet um, that, we were, that we were eating. And the really telling thing is that just three weeks after starting this high fruit, raw foods diet, all of that just went away. It all just disappeared. You wouldn't believe it. You just couldn't believe it, could you? I couldn't believe it. I was on medications every day for three years and after three weeks I wasn't having one pill. I felt great. I didn't have a headache. I had so much energy. It was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just bonkers and it's just gone on from there. If somebody told me, just said, eat they, fruit. They fruit, I'd tell them they were a fruit bat. Isn't I have true? told people to eat fruit and they do think I'm a fruit bat, yeah. but it's actually true, like it really is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this detox protocol is cleaning me right out from head to toe. It's, it's regenerating my cells, it's regenerating my organs and systems, and it is. It's, I'm getting the results of my blood tests back and it's showing that my body is getting healthier and healthier by the day. So I'm really, really, really so happy that I'm on this path. I get to hang out with him much longer. <laughs> Well, apparently you won't be going to hang around too much longer at the <laughs> current rate you're going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's our story thus far. Um, this is what's going on. And it continues, and it, and it will take a while because, um, you know, it's taken 49 years to get to this place, and, you know, it'll take a good year or two, I guess, to get myself back to a state of health. And, um, yeah, but it's working. It's really, it's amazing. So I'm so, so grateful for all of the people who have supported my belief in 
what is often seen as a kooky protocol. Yeah, well, most people I think would think that. And, um, yeah. You know, I thought it was probably a little bit kooky as well, but um, in saying that. Look well, at us! <laughs> <laughs> Truly, like if you could feel our insides. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, I'm sharing this because maybe it'll help somebody, you know. And I have to say, I encourage you not to take my word for it. You know, don't believe me. Do your own research. If you're sitting there and you've got a dreadful diagnosis of some, so some sort, I encourage you to get empowered. Do your own research. There's a stack of information out there and I'll put it in the description below. Now I ended up following the uh, teachings of a Dr. Robert Morse and he is a genuinely beautiful, talented human being. He's a biochemist and a naturopath and uh, he has 40 years experience in the detox and regeneration field and he really knows his stuff. He uh, puts out weekly YouTube videos answering people's questions on their health concerns and advising them how they can get their health back. And he has so many cases of survival stories, recovery stories, health stories. And yeah, um, I'd just like to share those links with anyone who feels that they're interested in having a look. Yeah, well, it's YouTube. He's a YouTube guy. Just um, Google him up and uh, have a look at him. He sort of sw he switched the light on for me. That's for sure. You know about how he explains things. He puts it back to layman's terms and yeah, yeah. It all just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really good guy. Yeah. So whatever path you choose, I just like to encourage you to um, go with what makes you feel good. Go with what makes sense to you. Um, that's what I did. I looked to the to the to the light. I guess you could say it. I looked to what made me feel happy, and uh, it created belief. Because to me, if you don't believe in what you're doing, it doesn't matter what road you choose. If you don't believe, you ain't gonna win. And yeah. You've, you've got to create the power in your mind to to take it on your challenge and just power on through it. <laughs> so go with the thing that really makes sense. Whatever that is, yeah. do, your, do your own research. Yeah. Don't don't just take our word for it. It's just our our experience. You know the. The medical guys, you know, they don't, they don't condone this this sort of practice at all. Yeah. So, actually, no. My oncologist said he did say, you know, there's merit in that path. It's just not what we do. So, yeah, yeah, he did. He did, but it's 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 not propped up by the medical it's, system. It's definitely not propped up by the medical system. Maybe not the Australian like medical <laughs> system, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> but you know, that's okay because yeah. you know people learn. Um, their own modality and their own way of um, treating and healing people, their own way of doing things. And this is just another way of healing the body. And that's okay. Yeah, if nothing else, get yourself healthy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wrap it up about now. I hope that that has provided um, the information that we've been requested of from lots of lovely people's questions. They have been uh, wide and varied on um, on the topic of how to heal cancers. So yeah, this is what uh, I've done and this is our experience. Yeah. So we'll sign off now. Um, <laughs> thank you for tuning in if you're still there. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it was a bit of a ramble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we're gonna come back to our sailing videos uh, uh, starting back at uh, Townsville, which was about um, five or six months ago. So we've got lots of groovy footage that we've been taking since then. And it's all coming your way in a couple of weeks. There you go. Turn out. Until next time, take care and have a great week. See you guys. Oh, beauty. Thank you for watching. For real-time updates, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. Come here, love.
Remember to subscribe, help our channel grow by sharing with your friends and leave a comment below. I use Darren's leg as a gizmo. What do you reckon? Yeah baby.